Hello, boxing fans around the world. Thank you for joining me once again here on Talk and Fight for another episode of Boxing News Today. And we're going to start off with a story out of uh, Kalisha West's world. She was recently featured on uh, uh, Brooke's show. And uh, I just thought uh, I couldn't believe it when I saw her name pop up. So here we go. Uh, Kalisha West, it says on BoxingScene.com, hasn't thrown a punch in anger in years, but she was fighting mad about a month ago and not because she appeared on Talk and Fight. Uh, her 11-year-old nephew was being bullied in school, and these days, bullying goes hand-in-hand -hand with a video. So when the former two-division world champion and 2023 inductee into the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame got wind of it, the fighter came out of, the fighter came out of her again. Some would say it never left. Although feisty in and out of the ring, West has seemingly settled into retirement as a 35-year-old married mother of two, but blood is blood, and hers was boiling. And uh, I might want to add here, uh, during her interview with Brooke, she did mention that she would be willing to consider re-entering the ring once again competitively as a professional boxer. Anyway, she said, uh, I found out it was way worse than I thought. I, I just had that video, so when I talked to him, I said, look, I said, before I post anything, I need to know your side of the story. I need to know what the heck's going on. Even though I know my nephew's a good kid, you never know. Kids will be kids. Turns out the video of the older student pushing West's nephew down to the floor was a second incident. The first took place a month before. This time he was knocked out by a different student. student. West found out that when the assailant in that incident messaged her after she posted the video on an Instagram account, the kid who beat him, she said, who knocked my nephew out, said, I just want to say I'm sorry. I was the one who got suspended a month ago for punching your nephew in the face. And I was like, why did you do that? And he said, because he was annoying me. And I said, a lot of people are annoying in the world. And you, used to go, you just don't go to punching tactics. It'll never be nothing. You'll never do nothing with your life. And this little kid was like, I know. That's what my mom said. And he was so apologetic. That kid got a suspension, and so did the other. And when he arrived back at school, he was required to hold a sign outside the school that said, be kind. So there you go. Quick little story out of uh, Kalisha West, who recently appeared on Talk and Fight on Brooke Deerdorf Shore show. Um, here's a story out of boxingnews24.com. Actually, a couple of stories written by Dan Ambrose. First one featuring Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder told David Benavidez that Canelo Alvarez wouldn't fight him and needs to move up to 175 because he feels he'll dominate that division. Benavidez, 27-0, 23 knockouts, told the former WBC heavyweight champ Wilder that he has three more fights at 168 and then he plans on moving up to light heavyweight. So although uh, Canelo's not showing any interest in fighting Benavidez, you have to assume if he loses his rematch to Bivol in September, he can forget about fighting in period. Anyway, the 26-year-old Benavidez doesn't mention who those three fighters are, but uh, the author says maybe David Morrell, maybe Demetrius Andrade, maybe Jermall Charlo. And Charlo is the only one of those three with a large fan base and hasn't fought in two years. So it will be interesting to see what happens to Benavidez if he moves up uh, or remains down. So anyway, uh, David Benavidez, he definitely wants to fight uh, Canelo, but... I don't think that's going to happen because Alvarez doesn't want it to happen. Dan Ambrose also says another story. Ryan Garcia posted on social media saying he's got a fight at 140 coming soon. The recently beaten Ryan, who's now 23 and 1, 19 knockouts, didn't say who he'd be fighting, but he'll be offered an immediate title shot by WBA champ Rolando Raleigh Romero. If Ryan wants a golden opportunity to win a belt, he's got it against Roley because it doesn't get any better than this. Taking that fight against Roley would give Ryan a relatively safe matchup for his first contest with new coach Derek James in his corner. It would be a mistake for Ryan to pass his fight up because Roley isn't expected to hold on to his WBA title for long before he's dethroned or if he vacates to go up to 147. Roley, by the way, 15-1, 13 knockouts, is fresh off his ninth round knockout victory over Ishmael Barrasso on May 13th, capturing the vacant WBA 140 pound belt in his first fight in the light welterweight division after a year layoff and a knockout loss to Javonta Davis. Uh, said, uh, said Raleigh, I want it to happen. The boxing world wants it to happen. I hope Brian and his team want it to happen too. And if everyone wants it to happen, let's make this shit happen. So let's see what happens next. 
in, in stuff that's not going to happen. Uh, I see that the, the British are a little bit upset over Liam Smith. And Liam Smith has apologized to his fans after his rematch with Chris Eubank Jr. was postponed for a second time. The official announcement came this afternoon. That would be yesterday. But promoters of Boxer are still going ahead with the show on July 1st. And it's interesting. Instead of Smith Eubank Jr. 2, the main event at Manchester AO Arena will be Savannah Marshall's super middleweight contest against Franchon Cruz de Zern. Natasha Jonas will feature on the undercard, as will Mark Heffern, Zach Shelley, British super middleweight title fight. Uh, and there will be outings for Ben Whit Whit Whitaker, one of our favorites here in Talk of Fight, as well as Cal Calum Simpson and more. Said Smith, I'm gutted and I'm sorry to all the fans about the postponement. I've always said a fully fit Liam Smith beat, beats Chris Eubank every time. I've tried training through because I was desperate not to let anyone down, but I had to withdraw from the bout in July following the latest medical assessment this week. I'll heal up now and then be fully fit for later in the summer. Uh, he has originally, by the way, he originally, by the way, pulled out from the original date of June 17th because of a slight injury, quote unquote. The Liverpudlian is pleased that the July 1st will carry on. He said, I wanted Boxer to put a big card together and they more than delivered. So I'm honestly delighted that Boxer is keeping the card on without the pay-per-view, which doesn't always happen. And I would encourage all the fans to get behind Tasha Jonas and Savannah Marshall in their world title fights and the other fighters in a brilliant card. Speaking of, well, okay, I won't say brilliant card, but interesting card. Most Valuable Promotions, that company co-owned by Jake Paul, announced that lightweight Adam Kapenga, 11-3-1, seven knockouts, will now take on unbeaten Ashton H2O Silve. Now, he's been uh, profiled by Mike Orr on Talk and Fight before. He's 8-0, eight, no, eight knockouts in uh, Most Valuable Prospects, headlining bout for its inaugural event this Friday night, taking place at the Carib Royal Resort in Orlando, Florida. Kapinga will replace Angel Rebelar, who was forced to pull out due to an eye injury. One last story coming out of uh, the Queensbury team and Frank Warren in particular, who are heading over to Belfast. Uh, the Queensbury team is set to make their short haul hop across the Irish Sea this week, ahead of what will surely be a memorable event at the SSE Arena in Belfast. This is courtesy of BoxingScene.com. The main event for the evening speaks for itself with local hero Michael Conlon, bidding to become IBF World Featherweight Champ when he takes on the holder Luis Alberto Lopez in what should be a cracking fight that we are delighted to deliver to the BT Sports viewers, says Frank Warren. That by moving the main event, uh, ring walks to 9 p.m., that's their time, we've made certain that Lopez versus Conlon doesn't clash with any of this weekend's other boxing events so the fans can watch all the action live. But I've got a feeling Belfast will surpass any other option. Lopez, of course, is known to British viewers for the last time uh, late last year when he ventured into a Leeds cauldron and overcame previous champ Josh Warrington. Shows us what he's all about, and he's now swapping Leeds for Belfast, where he will encounter an equally partisan crowd baying for the hometown favorite to succeed. I am delighted, he said, uh, it's Frank Warren, as part of the package to bring this headliner to BT Sport. We're giving the opportunity for five Queensbury fighters to feature on the bill, and Nick Ball especially has a particular point to prove. Our Scouse Dynabo, I believe, is the future of the featherweight division and a world champion in waiting. He really announced his arrival on the scene last year with a hugely impressive win treble against dangerous opponents with a combined total of 55 wins and just five defeats. Bludgeoning a ball stopped all three of them. Quite simply, Nick wanted to be on this card because he intends to place him, himself right in the frame to fight the winner of the Lopez Conlon uh, brawl. There'll be no better place for him to put on a statement performance with the eyes of the boxing world fixed on Belfast. And isn't that great news for Belfast? That's fantastic news, I think, anyway, having been there several times in my lifetime. And it's a lot of fun. Great city. And they're going to be well entertained this weekend when that fight takes place. All right. Thanks very much for joining me. 
here on Talk and Fight. Appreciate it very much. Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We'll see you later on at 4 p.m. Eastern time when I join Mike Orr and Cedric Ben for their show, Knuckle Up. Thank you.